It's been an exciting week for the XRP community. Let's take a quick look at what might be happening in the week ahead, both behind the scenes and in the public forums where we're going to get some more information in the SEC versus Ripple case. If we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho and I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates, especially of the big things coming up in the week ahead. And drop a like for the YouTube algorithm if you find any value in the information here. Now let's take a quick look at the crypto market before we dive right in. We are still sitting at $2 trillion, up slightly from this time yesterday with Bitcoin at 46.7, Ethereum just a touch under 3,300, and XRP holding steady at the $1.30 level. Now let's look at what's going on in the coming week. We have two important dates over the next couple of days that we do want to keep an eye out for. On the 16th, which is tomorrow, based on today's recording, the 15th, uh, Ripple's response to the SEC's emergency motion for Discovery Conference regarding the Slack communications. So we will expect to see some serious pushback from the Ripple team on the disclosure of all of those communications. Again, there's a lot that could be in there that may not be directly related and who's to say what's in those uh, private messaging conversations. So I would expect heavy pushback from the Ripple team in that letter. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. And then on Tuesday the 17th, the SEC's response to Ripple's motion for a discovery conference regarding the deliberative process privilege and a motion to seal on the exhibits has to be filed. So expect to see that on the 17th. So hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on updates on both of those as they should be pretty important for the case ahead. Now, just to keep in mind, as we look at future deadlines, the 31st is the fact discovery deadline. That's coming up pretty quick. We're only about two weeks away from that. And then the expert discovery deadline is October 15th. Those two dates have been pushed out, those 60 days that we talked about previously when the SEC was granted their extension. I don't think we'll see another extension, but uh, who's to say if something doesn't get filed? But as of right now, those are the deadlines. And we're still waiting on responses uh, regarding whether or not there will be an actual phone conference for either the deliberative uh, process privilege or the Slack communications or just those letter motions or communications and that back and forth. Uh, the motion to intervene uh, with John Deaton hasn't gotten an answer yet. The motion to strike the fair notice defense still hasn't had a formal answer yet. And then the motions to strike for Garlinghouse and Larson. So lots of open items left. Uh, who's to say what's going on there if the court's just holding off until the end of the discovery period or as many people are speculating uh, possible settlement talks going on beyond uh, behind closed doors we don't know so i'm not going to speculate on that one but it could be a possibility now let's look at what's been happening this week so we are up over 60 percent the question this article asks is is the sec done with ripple uh, Ripple's battle has been ongoing with the SEC, as we've talked about here. XRP's parent company, Ripple, was entangled in lawsuit troubles ever since the SEC opened a case against the global payments company. And as we know, it's been accused of offering unregistered securities up to $1.3 billion. Now, this has been ongoing this entire period. And if you've been with me for a while, we've discussed it. Uh, since we first started doing this at the beginning of the year, end of last year. The dispute, which began in December, has really ended up nowhere but has done much damage to XRP's reputation. In spite of this, its market cap has risen to levels where Ripple can just pay up tokens to settle. However, one reason why Ripple needs to follow through with the lawsuit has been because of its biggest competitor, Swift. The Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications does large-scale transactions across 11,000 financial institutions in more than 200 countries. In order to combat that, Ripple needs to make sure global banks, treasuries, etc. want to work with it. Resolving the case and attaining a compliance status, status with regulators is the only way. And do keep in mind, once there's that clarity and something with the SEC, whether it's a settlement agreement or a win in the case, um, or even a loss in the case that still allows them to continue to do business and pay for previous uh, transgressions, 
uh, that would provide some clarity and guidance for institutions. Between big banks and corporations, there's a lot of opportunity in the payment space, especially with how inefficient payments currently are. Again, I work in corporate finance. Payments are a big pain in my neck. Uh, and the settlement that takes days and can be very uh, hefty when it comes to the charges, as well as the fact that there's cutoff times where if you don't hit a certain cutoff time, you can't process it on that day. The uh, XRP ledger is much more efficient and obviously gives you the opportunity to transact 24-7, which would be a major boon for businesses that are working in various time zones. Uh, so there's a lot of potential opportunity here still ahead that has yet to be unlocked because of the, you know, being held back by this lawsuit. So clarity will provide much more opportunity for sure. What about now? As is obvious, the current controversy led to a big dip in the token's price, but now the token is going up at a fast pace. This week alone, the token has risen by 57.8%. If you look here, though, I mean, from the last seven days, we're up to 66%, which is pretty incredible. Spurred by the market uptrend recently, XRP's unique features as a token are contributing a lot to its growth. Ripple is also benefiting from new development in the above-mentioned lawsuit from the SEC yesterday. And so this article is uh, dated just today. So yesterday, the SEC refused to hand over evidence discovery documents to Ripple's defense team despite the judge's insistence. To add to this, it seems that the lawsuit has gotten Ripple more media attention. Remember, Brad Garlinghouse has been on Bloomberg. He's been on CNBC. He's had a lot of conversations regarding this and the future developments. And that will only continue to grow as we progress through this. It's getting attention because of the lawsuit. But when there's a settlement, if that's possible, or a win in the case, that will just drive more attention. So again, more opportunity ahead. Um, as such, the company successfully converted a PR nightmare into a crucial marketing endeavor. At, um, it got the support of many important firms recently. This includes GME Remittance, one of the largest non-bank remittance service providers in South Korea, which joined RippleNet. And before this, Japan, uh, Japan's money transfer partner, SBI Remit, also teamed up with mobile payment service Coins.ph and SBI VC trade exchange to carry payments from Japan to the Philippines through Ripple. So some exciting things still to come, and you can see there's progression there. Now, why are all eyes on Ripple so uh, and XRP? Uh, even as we've seen some of the other cryptos cool off or their climbs be not as high, when you take a look here in the past week, you can see that XRP is far outpacing everything in the top 10, top 15 at over 66%. You've got uh, Bitcoin only up about 7%, Ethereum around 9 Cardano, another big winner uh, this past week, over 53%. But everything else doesn't even come close to that when you're looking at the real players here in the top 20. Now, as we continue looking here, we know about the partnerships, but there has been a big increase in development activity. Uh, for one, XRP's price recovery was backed by a solid rise in development activity. This was according to crypto analytic platform Santiment, which noted that the XRP network was closing in on a higher daily GitHub development rate than Bitcoin, an activity that has rarely occurred. Decoupling for Bitcoin has been one of the major drivers for the crypto assets price action of late. In addition to that, it was not just the development activity on the digital assets network that was approaching new all-time high levels at the time of this writing. Its daily active addresses, too, followed a strong uptrend coupled with high trade volumes and soaring prices. And along the same lines, a big exciting uh, thing happening very soon is Apex, the XRP Ledger Development or Developer Summit. This is coming up very soon, September 29th to 30th, so about a month and a half away. I'll link this down below so that you can attend if you're interested. They are doing in-person events here in Nevada, where I live, or in uh, Estonia in the EU, but there's also a virtual component so that you can join remotely. So there will be some guest speakers, there'll be some very interesting topics being brought up, and this will drive the future of uh, XRP, the digital asset. So very exciting to see this, and this I think will help drive even more developer activity. And with that, that will drive more of the use case, which will drive the utility, which in turn will ripple down.
ripple uh, to the price. So I hope that that really does come to fruition as we move throughout the rest of the year here. Now, one other thing that I think is worth a note, and we have talked about previously here, but uh, here's just an example. You see someone like BitBoy, who I know everyone has a different opinion about him and his approach, but when you look here, you can see he has a lot more topics uh, related to XRP. So out of his last 20 videos, you know, about 25-30% of them have had some kind of mention of XRP. So it's very interesting that you see more of the mainstream crypto community discussing uh, XRP, which I still think is a good thing because the more that we have the conversation going, the greater transaction volumes, which will help drive price and interest and all those things. So I will never uh, think badly of someone speaking positively of XRP because it helps grow the community. Um, I think it's a pretty tight-knit community and we've got a lot of great people here, but it's always welcoming to others, in my opinion. And I think that that's really important because that will help drive the future growth as we get more and increased awareness here in the future. So if you found anything helpful, in this video, do make sure to drop a like. It does help the channel out a lot. And don't forget to subscribe so I can keep you informed of future updates as we come through this week. There's a lot ahead. Thank you so much for spending some of your time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend, though there's only a few hours left, and a great start to the new week. And I will see you in the next one.